Chris Reeves is Commercial Manager for Intelligent Mobility and Future Transport Technologies at uh, Myra Limited in, in the UK. His presentation is entitled The Green Wave. Good morning and uh, thank you for the organisers. Uh, or thank you to the organisers for inviting me. Um, I think the second from the last slide was a very important slide and uh, it's one that doesn't often get mentioned and there's a consumer involved in all this technology and you can launch any product you like but if the consumer doesn't want to pay for it it's not a particularly good product. Um, We've been working extensively with Coventry University um, for a number of years and I just want to discuss um, some of the research activity that we're undertaking relating to green waves and it's um, how to, we're looking at how we can understand uh, the impact of um, ITS, the digital industries within the urban environment and relating to road transport. But um, I just want to put some context on certain trends that are occurring. Next slide. Uh, before we start. In my lifetime, assuming that I get to a pensionable age and get a, uh, a reasonable return on investment, it's going to go from 3 billion to 9 billion people. That's in my lifetime. So we can put it on a graph that put some context onto it. Urbanisation is a huge driver. We're going to go to roughly 75% of the population living in the urban environment. And it's not just in the emerging nations. If you look at the UNICEF data there, it's very much a European problem. We're going to go, within my lifetime, from 1 billion cars to 4 billion cars. And the level of infrastructure required to meet the basic demand in transport, we can argue about the detail in the numbers, but there is a real trend that it's going to be somewhere in the trillions of euros over the next couple of decades, which is questionable whether it is sustainable. Also, everything will be connected, and there's going to be a new, next one, and there's going to be a new metric um, called the Brontobite. It's arguable as to how this will be divided, but data will be measured in 10 to the 27. However, next slide, I'll put a word of caution on this. Data is only valuable when it's turned into information and that information informs us in how to do something better. And uh, an, an interesting comment was made um, earlier, and that is real-time data. Is real-time good enough? Surely it should be predictive, so it gets me out of the event before I actually arrive. Next slide. Within the automotive industry, vehicle intelligence is increasing. Just go, and again. Yeah. We already have advisory systems. We already have suggestive systems, and in fact, we park in assist. We already have full authorities systems. Next slide. And there's a real trend to go from the feet off to the hands off to the complete brain off uh, when you're sitting behind the wheel of a car. And is the right-hand image a utopian view of the world? It's open for debate. But there are some really good reasons as to why we want to put intelligence into this uh, form of transportation. And I won't go through the list in its entirety, but clearly, and we've gone through this already, environmental, safety, economic, health, etc. Next slide. However, we need to take a system of systems approach. If we look at all the advanced driver assist systems, and the level of autonomy or automated systems that are going into vehicles, you become, you gain a very sensorate vehicle. However, that sensorate vehicle can be safe. However, it can be overly cautious and it doesn't have a wider view of the world. So what we want to do is combine the best of both worlds and that is make everything cooperative by having connected vehicles, connected infrastructure. So we've been doing some research, and it's uh, early stage research, looking at how we can um, assess the impact in the urban environment on traffic management control systems, where there's already extensive software available. There is a considerable level of, of hardware already out there relating to traffic signage, variable message signage, sensors, etc. 
and then looking at cloud computing um, platforms and how we can combine these and then look at the advantages that both cloud computing can bring but also the advantage of ICT on the urban environment. So some of the real advantages around cloud computing is it allows you to go to off-board control and it allows you to have a distributed architecture but it also enables you to have a service orientated architecture. For me, we can debate the cloud for as long as we want, but for me, it is very much how you get a service-based implementation out there where there's a reward mechanism. Okay. So it gives us this scalability, it gets it, some of the processing out, but it also enables us from the right-hand diagram to pick up all the sensors that are out there, all the signage, all the comms, and also to interface between intelligence in the vehicles. And there is a lot of information out there, and our model currently incorporates some of that uh, data that's available and some of the data that is coming, again, both from the sensors, through the radio communications that are coming into vehicles, information that's out there via the internet, social media, etc. And we're also taking into consideration the level of intelligence in the vehicle, we can take into account what we call dumb vehicles, vehicles that can platoon by understanding through um, adaptive cruise control what's happening with the vehicle in front, right the way through to a full cooperative pl platoon where you have communications daisy chaining down through that, uh, uh, that um, um, uh, fleet of vehicles. We can also include a range of um, intersection um, scenarios Next slide. And then we can then model both on the micro, meso, and the meso plus. So on the uh, micro scale, we can look at the um, predictive event and the actual event, and then we can um, optimize um, the traffic through an individual intersection based on a level of intelligence in the vehicle, a level of intelligence in the infrastructure, or not as the case may be. We can then look at the impact on adjacent um, intersections around that urban environment. And just to give an indication, um, this is a mixed fleet. The uh, red ones are intelligent cars and the black ones are dumb cars. Next slide. And then we can, from this modeling, we can create the statistical representation of what's happening in that urban environment and we can model efficiency relating to CO2 and fuel, dwell time at junctions, journey time to your endpoint throughout that um, trajectory that you, you're planning. And we can now model on urban scenarios, and this is just a use case based on Coventry. And I won't go in detail uh, into the graphs on the right-hand side, but just to summarize it, click again and again. Um, if you compare to the baseline scenarios, what we are actually seeing is something like a 10 to 20 percent reduction in average fuel consumption, a 10 to 40 percent reduction in average journey time. However, a real word of caution, it very much depends on the scenario, the speed of the vehicles, and in particular, the level of penetration of intelligence that you have in the fleet of vehicles. So it is achievable. There are real societal benefits. However, there are still considerable challenges and risks associated with implementing this. And not least of all is the cost against demand type models. And there has to be to um, um, justify some of the cost of implementation, new business models will be required to enable people to um, afford the cost of implementing this. There are also a whole host of consequences both seen and unforeseen relating to safety, the rollout of the uh, infrastructure, how wide you'd have to put a mesh network to enable some of these technologies to work. There are also legislative issues, liability issues, depending on the level of control in the vehicle. Okay. Um, just as a final slide, I'd like to acknowledge some of my colleagues in this work, um, both from Coventry University and Myra. Thank you. Thank you.